so shopping in your kitchen okay we have talked about this before we have talked about shopping your pantry before we talked about shopping your freezer before this time it is just a general shopping your kitchen so we are trying john and i are trying to be responsible adults and get prepared for just in case tennessee goes under a shelter in place um order that we would be prepared to go live in the camper um for however long that is so we have been trying to be responsible adults and wind down some of the things that we have um on hand that are fresh that are um uh, you know things that are going that are perishable um john is going to look and see if we have um we had a little a little chest freezer for my mom and um, we've got the little refrigerator already set up in the camper and ready and we've tested everything the last two weekends to make sure we can live out there <laughs> um but we are trying to make sure that we have some meals and things prepared ahead that john's mother can eat um and because the rest of us are pretty much like we could eat whatever i mean literally whatever you put in front of us we could eat um but his mom you know has has some medical issues and she's got some tummy issues that we have to you know kind of keep in, in check so just in case we have to go under a shelter in place we are trying to use up some of our perishable things but let me show you a couple of things that we found in our kitchen because we've been surprised because i've been digging you know digging okay what do we got what do we got what do we got i'm ashamed to say that i have found things that i didn't know i had as many times as I have said, shop your pantry, shop your freezer, shop your whatever. Yeah, embarrassed to say that I have found some things I didn't know I had. So one thing that I'm going to come out of this on the other side with is I'm going to be less of a food hoarder, I think. Because apparently I was hoarding food and then not using it. Okay, first thing though. The first thing that I found in my kitchen and if you all watched the video online, we um, this is on, um, I did this on IGTV, um, which by the way, I've started doing more videos on IGTV. I've had access to it for a while. Don't know why I wasn't using it. It's so easy. It's so easy and we can do recipes on that. No frills, um, nothing special. Don't know why I didn't know to use that before. Um, anyway, this is another good thing. So we did on IGTV, and it is on YouTube now, and it's on if you have an egg .com, um, the recipe for how to make this. But I have tons of just jars, just empty jars. Um, I have an issue with throwing jars away. Don't know why. I guess because a lot of places in Knox County don't recycle glass anymore. Um, and yeah, Sandra and Joyce saw it. I don't know why, but they don't recycle glass anymore. And when a jar is this big. And especially when it has a cute top like this, I don't know why I have a problem throwing them away. So I have all these cute little empty glass jars that I don't really do much with. Sometimes I'll put like cooks and things for the shop in them. Um, but this one was a sauerkraut jar, I think. Yeah, this is a Hingstenberg, Hingstenberg, I don't know how to say it, from Aldi, I believe. Um, but it's a super cute little jar, just sitting around not doing anything. So one of the things one of the shop your shop your kitchen things was i had this jar sitting in my kitchen i had this swedish dishcloth sitting over next to my sink and i have i already had a gallon of bleach so i always keep bleach um we um and i'm so sorry if you can't find bleach right now but we can't find sanitizing wipes right now toilet paper seems to be okay in knoxville again um paper towels really getting low on paper towels um but um but bleach i've been able to find it a couple of different places but i already had so while i was shopping in my kitchen i found a jug of bleach already had water found the jar already had the swedish dishcloth and i was like hmm we could make something with this so you'll have to go back and watch the video but quickly quickly this is a teaspoon of water per a teaspoon of bleach a teaspoon of regular household bleach per cup of water this happens to be a Swedish dishcloth like we sell at KC Kitchen Center. Um, you can go online and get those free jar. The jar was free. Um, so, yeah, so the jar was free. You just mix that together, um, and you can use this. You can use one of these for it's several days. So there was some debate about how long the bleach would stay good in the water. It's several days. So you're not going to want to make a whole gallon of this. Don't use your whole gallon of bleach. So, um, and it does bleach. Out. I don't know, Sylvia. Okay, so Sylvia wants to know how it does not bleach out. I don't know. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. Like they, they are 
just barely off white when you get them when they're brand new but how does this color not bleach out because this has been in here this one i made three days ago so if you're not going to go through three cups of water um in four or five days then don't make that much just make like you can make a cup of water you can make whatever size you want to and if you don't have a swedish dishcloth um you can use um, some other kind of um, cloth or rag that's not gonna you know that's not gonna get messed up with this do rinse it out in between each one hello hey i know divine's talking to michelle but hello divine i didn't get to say hi to you tonight um but yeah so make this you know make this last like four or five days maybe so if you're not going to be using that much but we're doing everything because uh we live in a loft so i'm bleaching our door i'm bleaching all of our stuff i'm bleaching um the outside doors i'm bleaching the doors going outside the doors coming inside i'm bleaching the um keypad where we go into the garage so i am bleaching for everyone so i'm just under the assumption that no one else i mean they may be but i'm just under the assumption that no one else is doing anything so yeah okay so anyway i made that okay then this is the thing that i was embarrassed by so while i was digging looking for other things um in the kitchen you know shopping the kitchen um john had mentioned that um well he didn't want much for supper tonight so i had said well we have a ton of those tuna packs so you know i use those tuna packs in every like I don't know, not every, like probably once a month or once every six weeks, I break out those tuna packs as an example of something that we're talking about in the chat, in the chat. So I was like, well, you know, we have eggs. And now that I know how to hard boil eggs in the air fryer, which that's a whole nother chat, if y'all want to go back and watch that. Um, but now that I know how to hard boil eggs in the air fryer and I can hard boil one egg, two eggs, four eggs, whatever we want, we could just make tuna salad, you know, for sandwiches. So while we have the tuna packs but i un unburied these or uncovered these i have seven cans of tuna why why i don't know i don't know why and i still have way too many black beans so we will be having tomorrow night we didn't make it for tonight but tomorrow night we will be having tuna salad sandwiches because we have way too much tuna i have seven cans of tuna um that's plenty that's plenty plus we have eggs Hello, Susie. So we will be having tuna salad sandwiches for supper tomorrow night. So if you have tuna or if you have the tuna packs, if you've got any of the tuna packs and you have eggs, don't forget that you can use your air fryer if you don't want to boil, if you don't want to boil the eggs. So like when we get over to Casey's, we're not going to go in, you know, go over to the camper. We're not going to go in and use her, you know, her stove to boil eggs. And that doesn't work for me anyway, but we will be taking an air fryer with us. So anyway, so that's one thing that you can do while you're shopping your kitchen what oh and jackie made black green brownies today i literally could probably do that because i have so many of them so many of them and loretta says she started using cottage cheese i don't know i'll have to think about that cottage cheese and light ranch dressing in her tuna instead of mayonnaise the light ranch dressing i could get into the cottage cheese i don't think i can do it i don't think i can do it yeah okay and let's see it says it's chicken thigh it says it's skipjack tuna in water. Are you talking to me? Because if you're talking to me, Bernice, it says skipjack tuna in water. So I hope you're not talking to me because it does not say that it says skipjack tuna. Okay, the next thing that I found, I have all kinds of these. I have all kinds of these little fruit cups. Um because I collect them and they're the, the no sugar added fruit cups. And so I have them with peaches, I have them with pears. Um, these two happen to be mixed fruit, um, but I have all kinds of them. And since I am at, um, ooh, an avocado sounds good, Sandra, in her tuna salad. But since I'm at work by myself, um, I'm not leaving to go anywhere to get anything to eat. I'm taking stuff. I've pre-prepared stuff, um, which if y'all know me, if you've been following me for very long, you know, or especially if you attend my WW, the WW meeting that I attend with Gwen on Tuesday nights when we were able to go, you know that I struggle with actually eating at work. It's not the having food, it's eating because normally we are so busy in the showroom that I don't have time to eat. So I'm taking advantage of this time when there is no one there but me to get into a habit of having things that I can eat and that I'm satisfied with. And I've actually lost two pounds doing that 
because then I don't go, because then I don't, oh, um, Susie's late and wants to know what we're talking about. So we're talking about shopping our kitchen. So I'm just showing you some things that I have found in my kitchen that we're going to be, that we're going to be using up, um, just in case we go under a shelter in place order. Um, but anyway, so I'm having, to, I'm coming up with some things that I can be happy with, um, that I can be, you know, that I can be happy with at work, um, not going, not leaving, not going anywhere, um, I did have the sweetest customer, though, bring me food the other day. So he and his wife had done, we had done a virtual in-home estimate, which was so fun. It was a Zoom, we did a Zoom meeting, and they were so cute. They were sitting at their kitchen table just ready for me. And we talked about their cabinets and their kitchen and their thoughts and their, you know, what they wanted to do with their kitchen and everything. Um, and it evolved into them coming by to pick up some samples. Well, the day that they came to pick up the samples, we were not under the um, stay at home order yet. Um, and so I was keeping people at a distance. We had marked out six feet on the floor to keep people away from the hostess desk. We were observing um, safe distances from each other. I was only letting the girls work every other day. So when they were upstairs, there was only one person upstairs at a time. If Casey was the hostess for the day, she was, she had the desk. She had the whole thing. We were not to go into her space. We were not to go over and use her phone. We were not to touch her keyboard, you know, and I was sanitizing because remember, I've been making these, so I've got one of these at work too. But um, once it was hers, it was hers. So while they were there and we were practicing, you know, the safe distancing, you know, letting them pick up their samples, and they wanted to stop and get something to eat. And I mentioned um, something that we enjoy from one of the local places um, and, you know, told them about it. Well, when they came back to bring their samples back, I had started blocking off the door. I started locking the door. All the girls are at home except for me. Um, so and I had a table blocking the door and they knew it. They already knew it. So he knew that when they pulled up, I was going to unlock the door and I was going to step away and that we had a table set up for people to return their samples to. And that's also my mailing station. I have my bleach water ready. I have my Lysol ready. So when they brought their samples back, they were to leave them say bye, leave, and then I would bleach everything and put it back where it goes. They brought me carry out. That was so sweet. They brought me what I had suggested to them. Anyway, so I'm trying to get in the habit and I'm having to right now. So I'm being forced, forced to do, to make this new habit of eating lunch at work. And I'm trying to make it things where I can continue this when people can come back that I will keep eating. So I thought these were a perfect thing, even though this is not lunch, this is a perfect, 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 and I love these, and I never think to make them. My mom used to make this all the time. So I'm going to take these, and I'm going to drain the juice off of them. Then I'm going to make the jello, and you make it, and because I have tons of sugar-free jello, I already have this. I already have these in my kitchen. I already have a drawer full, I mean a drawer full drawer full of sugar-free jello it sounds like sandra does too um so i was like why not so i'm gonna drain some of these i'm gonna mix some of this and you make it with half the water that you're supposed to for this so whatever the directions are and i think it's a cup and a cup it's a cup of boiling water and then a cup of cold water so you do a half a cup of boiling water and a half of a cup of cold water if you're going to do this because you want it to set up really firm in these little because you're not just making jello you're this is more liquid these even though you've drained these it adds more liquid so you use half the amount of boiling water half the amount of cold water get that going have already drained these off i leave when i peel it off i leave the lid attached like right here so that when i drain them and then when i pour this in i can pull the lid back over and then i either i retape it back down or something and then put it in the refrigerator and i'm gonna have little jello fruit cups how easy is that? Okay, so that was something else that I found in my refrigerator, and I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about my little Jello fruit cups. Okay, the next thing is, and I'm gonna save the most exciting for last. Okay, the next thing, <coughs> and I'm gonna try and talk slow so that, I'm sorry, these are just too cute. They're too cute. I look up a coffee. I mean, I'm gonna try and talk slow. <sighs> because I have not, yes, okay, I'm sorry. Carol Lou, yes. You pour the jello into the fruit. So let me slow down for a second because I talk too fast sometimes, which I know is unusual for people from the South, but I talk too fast sometimes. 
you take the fruit cups and I think it's six I think last time I did it and I don't know why do I not keep doing this anyway I think it was six peel the top back just go ahead and peel it back but don't take it off or I don't take it off and then you're gonna drain all of the juice off of this because you just want this to be the fruit so you drain all of the juice off of this and then you take a packet and it's a small box it's a small box of sugar-free jello any flavor any flavor my mom's favorite was um lime and pears um so if they'll let her eat anything if they're gonna let her eat anything when she gets back and when we can go back i might see if she can have that but anyway she used to make us uh she used to slice the pears or get sliced pears maybe and she would put them in a pan and do the same thing but i'm gonna go ahead and make them in the little cups so pour the liquid off the cup make the jello but you make it half half what it says on here so it's one little packet half a cup of boiling water then you put the jello in there and let it dissolve then half a cup of cold water stir it again and then you're going to pour that into the little cups and i think it makes six little cups i'll let you know after i do it and oh yeah betty says sliced pineapple and jello mm -hmm. But you want the, because this is wet, you know, you're not just making jello. If you were just making jello, you would go according to the directions. But because even with the liquid drained off, these still have liquid, if that makes any sense. You want half or it's not going to set up. Um, anyway, then I'll leave the lid on there. Tape it back down. Just look like one piece of tape. Tape it back down or you can set it inside of, like I have these containers too. You can do... Hold on just a second. If you're worried about it spilling or if you're worried about it dumping over, then if you're gonna transport them, then you can put them down inside of another little container. So I have these little Ziploc containers. You can put them down in there. Um, so you, like if you need to transport them or whatever um, to work so that you can, you know, anyway, you can keep up with that. Okay. So, and then you're going to let them chill for, I think it's a couple of hours, but I always do it overnight because I'm going to be taking them somewhere the next day. Okay. So, <clears throat> the next thing is, and yes, a Joyce says a muffin tin would work. That would totally work. Totally work because they're going to be a little bit firm when you take them out. Okay. The next thing. So, I was digging through the freezer or, well, when I was discovering my seven cans of skipjack tuna, um, chunk light skipjack tuna. While I was discovering those, um, I also found a an overabundance, a plethora hefe, of black cans of black beans. I still, why do I have so many black beans? Anyway, so I found a lot of black beans, and I found a couple of cans of pinto beans, a couple of cans of um, navy beans. Um, anyway, a lot of others. So I was like, hmm, I should really probably do something with all these beans. And then. Um, I started digging through the freezer, and in the freezer, I found a turkey kill balsam. So I thought, well, you know, I could sure I could make something out of that. Then I realized, hmm, I have an already open thing of unsweetened applesauce. So I love unsweetened applesauce. Like I could literally just sit and eat it. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love that almost as much as I love watermelon. So I could literally just sit and eat applesauce, like a ton of it. Um, but I have an open, <coughs> like a bigger, this size, bigger container of applesauce that needs to be used. And, oh, Kathy says it's hard to find canned beans there right now. It'll get better. Stores will start to replenish. We live in bush bean country. So if we don't have beans, we got a problem because Bush's beans is like, I don't know, 20 minutes from here. So we have to have beans. Okay. But anyway, so I had a frozen turkey kielbasa beans coming out my ears i don't buy dried beans and all like the shelves it's funny the canned beans are all still there they're all still there or bushes has just replenished i don't know but dried beans the shelves are empty i ain't never ever ever made beans from dried beans okay never ever my parents used to all the time i see no point in it none none so i always have canned beans but anyway so i had a turkey kill balsa in the freezer too many cans of beans and I thought hmm what can I make and this open thing of applesauce well that doesn't make anything but then I realized hmm I already have a thing an open thing Ooh, Myrna made one point muffins that had applesauce in them that sounds yummy you should share the recipe um oh and Loretta found all those beans in her pantry and she made a bean salad 
salad. Ooh, and she made a veggie burger. That sounds good. Um, but I also had an open jar of G Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce from, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, you know, I really need that to use that up too because if we are, if we get this shelter in place order, and I hope we do not, but if we do, I do not, I would be heartbroken, heartbroken if I came home after a week or two weeks or however long it lasts and found all this stuff with fuzzy stuff all over it. So I took one and a half, or took a cup, I'm sorry, I took a cup of the G Hughes sugar free barbecue sauce. I took a cup of the unsweetened applesauce and I took two squirts of, wait, okay, Debbie. She said the turkey kielbasa came out on speech recognition as turkey kielbasili. That's weird. Anyway, so a cup of the barbecue sauce, a cup. Okay, and Susie, really quick, because Susie's asking what shelter in place is. Okay, um, and Vicky's asking why we can't stay in the loft. Okay. John's, if we get shelter in place, John's parents are on medication that has to be taken at 7.30 and 4.30. It can't be 7 o'clock and 5 o'clock. It can't be, oh, whoops, we missed today, so we'll make it up tomorrow. It can't be we missed this morning, so we'll take it tonight. They have to have their medication at 7.30 and 4.30. So if we get a shelter in place order, we will be, so shelter in place, Susie, is different than stay at home. So we had safer at home at first which was on the honor system for everybody just, you know, that you're safer if you're at home for everybody to stay home. And apparently we did really well for like two days and then it was off the charts with people going out again and hanging out together, even outside. People were still congregating outside. So then our governor put into place a, okay, and Haley, I'm going to explain why. Then the, um, it's funny, Haley's asking why we would stay in the camper instead of in our home. We, we actually love the camper. We love it. Love the camper. Um, but anyway, it's a little camper, but we love it. But anyway, so um, then we went to, oh, man, we got five minutes. Stay, stay at home. Shelter in place, though, means you don't go out except for medical necessity or for food. That's the only reason you go outside. So that's another reason we're trying to use all this up. And we would stay there so we could do his parents' medication. And we would have access to Casey's Kitchen. And we can still go do his parents' stuff. Okay, so turkey kielbasa, beans, a cup of barbecue sauce, sugar-free barbecue sauce, a cup of applesauce, unsweetened applesauce, and some garlic. And I let the applesauce and the and the barbecue sauce and the garlic, I let it simmer for like 15 minutes and kind of cook down. And then I mixed it in with the beans and with the kielbasa. And I cooked all of that for 40 minutes, for 40 minutes on 350 and I'm going to try a little bit of it real quick. And then I'm going to hurriedly show you the last thing. Do not leave. Don't leave because you're going to want to see the last one. But it kind of caramelized. Here, I'm going to cut this in half though. That's way too, good, too big of a bite to try and eat and then show you all at the same time. I'm trying to get some of this little caramelized bit. Okay. So cooking down the, oh yeah, Lietta says they can go to work. Yeah, you can go to work because Lietta is one of the wonderful people who's taking care of my mother. Um, Thank you. And Lietta, we love you lots so much. Okay, but this, it caramelizes the barbecue sauce and the applesauce. And I'm sorry, I'm fighting with it because I'm trying to get it to flip over so I can show you the caramelized. Can you see it at all? The caramelized barbecue sauce. Okay. Mm. Lietta, I promise. Lita, I promise we love you more. I promise. <laughs> so, this is going to be my lunch to go to work for the next few days. And look at this huge pan that it made. Okay. The last one. I saved the best thing for last. So, you know, I already said that we have to go do John's mom and dad's medicine twice a day. And yes, Betty, I'll try. And I should have lots of time since it's me by myself. But for some reason, I um, but anyway, so we have to do John's mom and dad's medicine at 7.30 and 4.30 every day. So right now, we are still driving back and forth. Well, they bought like a week or so ago. I do not know why. They bought like eight bananas. They don't eat that many bananas. So they had six bananas that were just about done, and they were going to throw them away. And John was like, no, 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 no. Kelly will make something out of that. So 
I went on drizzlemeskinny.com and you're just gonna have to go there because I don't have time to go and read all the ingredients off to you. But, so I had six nearly dead bananas. This recipe takes three nearly dead bananas. It is on drizzlemeskinny.com. She is one of my favorite food bloggers. It is the double chocolate banana loaf. It has smushed up bananas, flour, vanilla, one egg, cocoa powder, which I had all this. All I needed were the dead bananas. Um, cocoa powder, I didn't quite have enough chocolate chips, but I'll live, you know, I'll be okay. And vanilla and brown sugar. And I think that was it. Anyway, so I already had all of this. I already had all of this. My in-laws were gonna throw the dead bananas away. Now we have got 10 slices of double chocolate banana bread courtesy of Kate from um, Drizzle Me Skinny. So y'all go over and check her out. It is drizzlemeskinny.com. She is on Instagram under Drizzle Me Skinny. Just go over and tell her, hey, Kelly made, your, Kelly made your double chocolate banana bread and we're all drooling now. So please be sure and tell her that I said hello. I get nothing. I get nothing for you telling her that I said hello other than a smile um, because, you know, the bloggers are feeling lonely too, okay? <coughs> they work from home every day and y'all have been watching the news so much that you're not paying attention to them. So everybody go tell her you said hi, that I said hi. Make some of her yummy banana bread. We are going to try some here now. Um, so I hadn't actually tasted it. And yes, Loretta said I would eat that for breakfast. This is, John is already trying to figure out he's going to, he's going to eat it for breakfast. So, except he wanted it to be four servings and I agreed with him, but it's 10 mm. servings. So let's try this. Mm -hmm. mm. That's super good. Super, super good. Okay. So, uh oh. Four servings. No, it's not four servings. It's <laughs> 10 servings. It's 10 servings, John. He wants it to be four because he's wanting to eat a fourth of this for breakfast tomorrow. Um, anyway, big shout out to his parents for buying way too many bananas. Yeah, because we're going to enjoy this. And that means I still have three bananas left to make something else with. Okay, so that is it. Do not forget to do your homework this week. If you are watching this later on YouTube, go ahead and watch the next video up here. Or you can, and or and or and debbie says hey orlando debbie says hey okay <laughs> um oh and john orlando debbie john is trying to figure out how to make masks and use the disney pins anyway um but go ahead and subscribe so watch the next video subscribe share it with somebody share one of the recipes go tell drizzle me skinny kate that i said hello and i will see you all next week so y'all have a great week and we'll see you later be safe out there